Okay, today we're going to talk about how to clean a fish while maximizing the amount of pounds or ounces of meat you get off the fish when you clean it. Your fish can get a lot bigger on the cleaning table by just thoroughly cleaning and getting all the meat off of the carcass. The first thing you want to do is study the type of fish. Most fish are about the same, but a lot of fish, they'll have meat that goes all the way up into their forehead, way up in here. So some people that do a really sloppy job of cleaning, they'll take their knife and go down and then go sideways down the backbone and they miss all this meat up here, the belly right here. There's a bunch of meat up here and underneath the, the jaws or whatever. Some people take their fish and they go backwards up like that and then they go like that and they leave all this meat up here, all this meat down here. So what I'm going to show you is how to butterfly a fish and to get the maximum amount of fish meat out of your out of your catch. Okay, the first thing to do is go ahead and just do a light shallow cut all the way down the top fin line. Okay, sometimes you gotta flick it like that to get the scales out of the way. Okay, and you can feel the knife going over each of the ribs. When you get down close to the tail, so you're not gonna lose any meat, just go and shove straight through to both sides and then just finish it out coming down to the tail like that. Okay, the next thing is cut up underneath the gill plate because there's meat actually up underneath the gill. So if you cut it at an angle, and then you follow around the skull, so you get that meat up there in the, in the, in the forehead. Okay, release this little piece right here. Okay, now take your knife, and as you come down through here, you can feel each rib as the knife glides over the top of it. It'll be like a click, click, click. Because we want to stay right on those ribs. We don't want to let any meat get left on the ribs at all. And this thing will just peel right down when you get down to the backbone now, you go up and over the backbone so you don't lose any meat you know, through the thickness of the, um, the vertebrae. Okay? And get right down and you just pop the skin right off the bottom down there. Okay? So we're going to follow this thing down. Okay? Now when you get to the ribs, there's going to be a few little bones here that you got to pop through. Not the ribs that cover the, the cavity of the um, guts and all that, there's just a few little small ribs you pop through and then you slide right down over each one of these ribs. Now a lot of times I like to not kind of go all the way down to the bottom because I don't want to bust that nasty gut sack down there and get some stank all over my fish. Okay, so let's flip over. I'm going to do the other side now. Sit there, follow along the thin line and we're cutting shallow so we don't you know, lose any meat there. Again, on the gill, go up underneath the gill plate Get all that meat up in there. Okay, then trying to get this front piece to release. At least be stuck right there. Once you get it off, then you can start rubbing those ribs. Coming right down off those ribs. Okay, so now I'm gonna go backwards down close to the tail. And when I get down near the end of the tail, poke through the other side, and then go and finish out coming down through the tail. Okay, and as my knife goes through here, I can feel the click, click, click over each one of those ribs that, the vertical ribs up and down. We actually shot this fish with a spear gun, so he's got a hole through him right there. I had to kind of go around just a little bit. Okay, when I get to the backbones, the vertebrae, I make sure I go over the top of those and then down so I don't lose any meat due to the thickness of the vertebrae. Okay, now here comes the real trick to it. In just a second, I'm going to finish out this ribs. And this is going to be how you butterfly your fish and get all that belly meat and everything. There's almost an extra fillet on the bottom of most fish that a lot of people just throw to the crabs. There again, this fish got a little bit beat up right here in the rib cage because he had a spear go through him right there. Okay, so now that I've gotten down close to the bottom, what I do is I come underneath this fin right here, I cut, and then I go up underneath the jaw all the way up there, because there's a lot of meat right up in here. See all that meat? A lot of people throw that meat away. You can go through both sides usually with just one cut. Come over the other side, and then connect your cut from up top there, again right into there. Okay, now here's gonna be the trick. 
Now we got to release these ribs off of that thing, hopefully without busting that gut sack. Okay, and release the other side. And again, you see where he got shot with a spear. Okay, and then I just pick the whole carcass up and it pulls right off of the thing, totally separate. No. So now let me clean this up and I'll show you how much meat. I mean, what we got, this is what I call butterflying. So look at this big piece of meat right here that we got. And there's a little bit of bone right here in the front of it, but when you cook it, you can just rake it right off of that, those two pointy bones like that. This type of cleaning, there shouldn't be any ribs left through here, but there'll be just a teeny bit of those little spike ribs right there. And once you cook it, you can actually just pull them right out. Or if you want to take your fillet knife, you can just cut a little incision right there. I like to leave the skin on my fish because we cook on the grill and the skin will actually get into a hard crusty plate so that the fish doesn't break up when we try to move it with the spatula. But there you go. That's called butterflying. And I actually got three flays out of this thing rather than two. So, okay, I need about 60 seconds of your time. I'll be right back and then I'll show you how to keep the flies off of the fish that you're cleaning and away from your fillet knife. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need e any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair, what's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments, okay? One of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came he took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved of you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace, you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. Okay, now let's get back to our repair. I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. The other thing I was telling you about is we keep the flies off of the fish we're cleaning. So what we do is we put our gut fish over here and all the flies just love to go to those gut fish. And that way they stay away from the, the fish that we're cleaning and the extra fish we have on the cleaning table. So we set it over here for the decoy for the flies. One of the tricks that we use on this is our decoy for flies. So as you'll notice on this fish right here, there's no flies on this fish right here that we're getting ready to clean. All these fish that we've already cleaned, we put the carcasses on the other side of the cleaning table so the flies will go over there and they'll stay off of our fish that we're trying to clean next. In fact, notice all the flies are up there in the bushes and everything too. Zoom in on that right there. There must be probably about 500 flies, but they're staying away from where I'm cleaning my, they're staying away from the work that I'm doing, the fish that I'm cleaning, but they're just gravitating to the decoys that we put on the side of the fish cleaning table. Hey, I hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, 
I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you were the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.